What's up, everybody? Welcome to another episode of The Bass Journey. I'm your host, Action Jackson. I just played my first show with my band, Summon the Sun, and I used the Squire bass, so I thought I would just talk a little bit about that. Can you do a show with the Squire bass? We're going to answer that question. And also, what you should expect when you go to play your first show. Yeah, so welcome back to the show. Thank you for tuning in. Um, Yeah, so I played my first show with my band, okay? Awesome experience, by the way. It was super fun. Um, I was really nervous. I'm going to say that to begin with. If you're nervous before you do a show, that's pretty normal. Don't worry about that. Um, I did do a lot of practicing beforehand, which I do think helped me out during the show. Um... So we'll say that. Now, what was really cool, so I'll go from the beginning, right? We we showed up like 30 minutes early and just kind of waited outside. We were the first band there. Um, so we were just kind of hanging out outside the venue and talking. And then what was super cool was that um, they had a separate entrance for bands. So we got to load in through our own entrance, which took us to backstage. Uh, the stage wasn't like a huge stage, you know what I mean? It was a relatively small stage, but it was a nice stage. Like, it, it was pretty fun. Um, so, yeah, we were just, like, hanging out backstage, uh, you know, bringing our gear in. Um, and we, we played the show with a few other bands. We played with Red Dye Number 9 and 7th Junction and Rudy Turnstone. Um, you know, some really good artists. Uh, one of the bands, they were from my hometown in Baltimore, Maryland. And I thought that was super cool. Um you know, to get to experience like a home away from home kind of thing. But anyway, so we're setting our stuff up, you know, drums going first and, you know, we're like plugging all of our gear in. Now, the first thing I I really want to bring up is the sound guy. Okay. Shout out to the sound guy. The sound guy was awesome. Okay. He plugged me into the PA system without me even asking. He just plugged me right. I looked over and my amp was plugged into the PA and I was like, oh man, like, goddamn, this is happening, right? So we started doing the sound check. He did the drums first and then the guitar and then the bass. And he was kind of putting the levels up to so that all of our volume was, was equal and we could all hear each other. And then he did the vocals to make sure that um, we could hear the vocals over top of the music. And the guy was a, just a professional, man. Like, just a professional. I'll tell any band, uh, if you can... I would say that you should um, play first or second, whichever slot you need to get in to be able to get a good sound check. Uh, I know a lot of bands might want to play like later in the night when more people show up, but I would rather go toward the beginning of the night and play um, because you show up first and you get to do sound check and um, it's just like really awesome experience. So... After we did sound check, you know, we just kind of were waiting for the venue to open up and then people started showing up, you know what I mean? Like, just getting super nervous as the night goes on. Um, It was pretty cool backstage, though. They had a refrigerator that had, like, water and soda and beer in it, you know what I mean? It was like, okay, anybody who is playing the show, you guys can have any of this for free. So that was super awesome. Um, A good friend of mine showed up, um, and he actually took this video...
this brings me to my next point. Can you gig with a Squire bass? Absolutely you can. Absolutely. Listen, I played my Squire Vintage Modified PJ bass at the show, okay? And I was worried, like, man, is this going to sound good on stage this loud? And let me tell you something, man. I was blown away by how big my Squire bass sounded in that venue. I mean, it just sounded huge. It, it made me feel powerful being on stage with that bass after hearing you know, playing one song and just like, wow, I was just blown away. And I, I never felt powerful before. And that made me feel powerful. And so I don't really know, in my opinion, what the point is of spending $2,000 on a bass anymore. You know, there's some pretty expensive basses that I really do want. But after playing this show and hearing my Squire bass, I honestly just don't see the point anymore. I'm like, wow. Like, this is what you can get for a fraction of the price of a Rickenbacker. This is what you can get for the fraction of a price of, like, an uh, Aerodyne Jazz Bass or something like that. Like, I, I was just completely blown away. Um, Squire, if you have one, I promise you, don't worry about it. Don't worry about it not being a Fender or some high-priced Ibanez Bass. I'm telling you right now, that Squire Bass that you have is more than likely a complete beast, and you just don't realize it yet. And when you play on stage, you're going to find that out. But we get on stage, and we play the first song, and we played it super well. Like, everybody played good. The vocals sounded great. Um, no mistakes there. Second song I was super nervous about, because at the beginning of that song, I'm playing, um, like, a solo, which is actually... The bass line that you hear me play in the intro for my videos, that's the part that I was playing because um, it's the intro of the song. And I was just like, wow, any mistake that I make right now is going to easily be heard because I'm the only one playing. But, you know, I just I've been practicing a lot. So thankfully, I didn't make any mistakes right there. Second song was a breeze. It went great. Um, the third and fourth songs, I definitely made mistakes, but I just played through them. I got some advice from some guys on Talk Bass. They just said, if you make a mistake on stage, just keep playing. Ignore your mistake. Don't get caught up on it. Um, so that's what I did. And I noticed my mistakes, but other people didn't seem to notice my mistakes. And then um, the fifth and sixth songs, I played pretty well. So um, not I didn't make any mistakes that I can remember making on those songs. So that was cool. And listen, when I got off stage... Um, I could not go anywhere in that venue without getting a compliment. <laughs> so that was pretty cool. Um, you know, I went to the bar area because, uh, you know, like my heart's beating really fast and just like too much energy. You know what I mean? So I just needed to like get away from people and decompress a little bit. So I went to the bar area because there wasn't really anybody in there except these two girls. And um, the one lady, she just starts like hitting on me. <laughs> <laughs> she just starts like hitting on me she's like oh my god like weren't you the guy playing bass and oh uh, you sounded so good and the bass is the soul of the band and all this stuff that she was like saying to me and like asking me how old I am and this that and the thing. <laughs> she was definitely hitting on me so I, I thought that was funny but I was like man like I'm not really here for this um so that was cool and one of the bass players from one of the other bands he compared me to the bass player from Tool, which I thought was completely insane because I'm not that good. I just want to say that right now. I'm a pretty okay, mediocre bassist in my opinion, but it was really cool to get a compliment like that from another bass player. And I just want to say that all the bass players there were good. Um, it was wild. Like, they were all good. The one guy was playing um, the bass player for 7th Junction. He was playing a Fender P bass, and... His tone just sounded so punchy, like you would have thought he was playing a jazz bass or something. But he's playing a Fender P bass. He's just like walking all over the bass, like it, it was just super intense. Um, and the bass player for um, Red Dye Number no. Nine, they uh, this guy he was playing um, a Music Man bass, which those basses sound incredible live. Like that was a really cool thing to experience. And he was just very involved. His stage presence was just like super strong. You know, I was a little bit afraid to walk around the stage because, um, you know, the stage was kind of small. I didn't really want to get in the singer's way and stuff like that. 
But man, he wasn't scared at all. He was just like all over the stage, coming off the stage, leaning over the edge of it. You know, it was just like a super cool show. And not a whole lot of people came out, but it was like, you know, a good amount of people for a punk show, in my opinion. So, yeah, that was pretty awesome. Um, and I definitely can't wait to play live again. You know, uh, I learned a couple of things from playing live. Um, one of the things I learned was um, trust your sound. Because for the third song, I use an overdrive pedal, and I was afraid of, um, like, being too loud, like, louder than the guitarist. Because when I turn my overdrive on, it adds a lot of gain to my signal, so it kind of boosts my volume. So I turned it down just a little bit, and you can still hear me, but I feel like I could have been a lot more clear if I didn't even mess with the volume. So one thing I would say is trust your sound. Um... You know, don't worry about being too loud. That's the whole point of the sound check to make sure that people aren't too loud and stuff like that. So, you know, I learned to trust my sound. Um, I've learned to keep playing through the uh, the mistakes and to just uh, have fun and not worry about it so much, you know, because I was super worried being on stage. And I feel like that that kind of made me stiff. And maybe that made me have... Uh, make a couple mistakes because I was worried so much about making a mistake. I probably tricked myself into it, you know, because I did a lot of practicing. So, you know, the amount of practicing that I did, I shouldn't even have been nervous about making mistakes, but that was just me second guessing myself. So yeah, when you go to play your first show, um, try to play as early as you can so that you can do the first sound check and trust your sound. Okay. Trust your sound. Try to trust the sound guy. Okay. Um, and also uh, play through your mistakes. Just play straight through the mistakes. You know, don't worry about, um, you know, being nervous about making mistakes because you could trick yourself into it, you know. So, yeah, great learning experience. Great show. Can't wait to do it again. I wouldn't mind playing there again um, at this venue. I really wouldn't mind it. Even if it was our second show playing at the same venue, it was such a awesome experience and everybody there was so cool and um i didn't feel like anybody was being like callous or hateful or anything like that so you know that's always a good time when you can go to a show and you just feel accepted and also don't be afraid to have um a, an affordable bass on stage don't be afraid to have a squire bass on stage um you know i used my squire and i'm so glad that i used it because to me i sounded lovely like, you know, I really liked the way that I sounded. And I couldn't believe that I, I sounded that good, honestly. Like, listening to myself on stage, I was like, man, I cannot believe that my Squire sounds like this. Um, I might even buy a Harley Benton bass next. You know, um, so on Dave's World of Fun Stuff, uh, that's a pretty cool bass guy to follow on YouTube. But he was saying that, um, you know, the cheap stuff that we have today is miles ahead of a lot of the stuff that they had in the 80s that were expensive instruments. And I, I thought that was a very interesting take because, you know, he's an older guy, so I guess that he would know. But yeah, one um one of his videos, he's just like, yeah, you know, like, vintage doesn't mean good because a lot of the stuff today is just miles ahead of, you know, the gear that we had back in the day. And so that says a whole lot, you know. So yeah, I'm thinking about buying a Harley Benton bass at this point because they get a lot of really high praise for making good instruments at a very low price. And like I said, after playing on stage, I'm excited to see what is really going on with the Harley Benton jazz basses and the P basses. Um, because if my Squire can sound like that, man, I can only imagine like how good um, our Harley Benton bass might, might sound um, on stage. So... You know, just something to think about. Don't take part in the headstock name wars. Like, oh, it's not a Fender. It's not a Schecter. Like, that doesn't really mean a whole lot these days because uh, instrument manufacturing has just took a giant leap into the future. And you can tell that by um, the instruments that are being put out at such a low price. So, yeah. That was my experience playing a Squire PJ bass on stage at a show in a rock band. A very positive experience, I would like to say. And um, 
I will more than likely be buying a new Squire bass or even a Harley Benton bass as a result. Um, they sound great on stage, so don't worry about playing an affordable brand. Uh, thank you for listening to me rant and rave uh, about the show that I played. And I promise you the music video for my band is coming out soon. We're still waiting for the final cut. Um, you can follow us on Instagram at Summon the Sun Band. Or you can follow us on Facebook at Summon the Sun. Make sure you guys practice bass today. And please be safe. Have a good day.